Welcome to the video on Types of Bonding. So our aims for this video are to be able to describe ionic bonding both with words or diagrams and explain the properties of ionic compounds. Um, do the same for covalent bonding and the same for metallic bonding. So an example of an ionic compound would be sodium chloride. And the first, well, the first thing we should do is really try and describe what ionic bonding is. So ionic bonding is the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. And that's um, a sentence you could learn for your exam. So it's the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. Now, if you were asked to draw a picture of this, then you need to make sure that you draw it in 3D. And remember that they are oppositely charged ions. So what you're going to get is positive and negative ions um, alternating in the lattice. So you're going to have a lattice of positively, positively charged ions and negatively charged ions that are attracted towards each other. So here's how you draw it. So you've got a positively charged ion there, and then negative, po negative and positive all alternating like so. So these ones will be positive and then these ones will be negative. And that's enough to get you the marks for drawing a 3D picture. Now the properties that ionic compounds um, show are based on this structure. Um, so they have a very high melting point because you have to break all these strong ionic bonds, because all of the ions are joined to another one, there are many, many of these bonds to break. Now, to melt an ionic compound, you have to break a lot of these bonds. To turn into a gas, to boil it, you'd have to break all of these bonds, which is why more energy is needed to turn into a gas than into a liquid. So there's a high melting point, and this is because you have to break many strong ionic bonds um, and it also um, it does not conduct electricity when it's solid and that's because that for a, a substance to conduct electricity it has to have charged particles that can move now an ionic compound does have charged particles as he positively negative ch negative charged ions but in a solid they can't move because they are bonded together. So in a solid it can, cannot conduct electricity. Um, as ions cannot move. But as soon as you melt this you are breaking some of these bonds which allow some of these ions to move. So if this is a liquid or indeed if it's dissolved in, in water or a different um, liquid, then these ions will then be free to move and then it can conduct electricity. So, it, so ionic compounds can't conduct if they're solid, but can conduct if they are liquids. And that's due to the fact the ions cannot move in a solid, but they can move once they're turned to a liquid because, because some of these bonds are broken. So another type of bonding is covalent bonding. And an example of, uh, of, of molecules that are joined together with covalent bonds are um, carbon dioxide or water. And these compounds have um, covalent bonds between the atoms, but they have intermolecular forces between the molecules. So what is a covalent bond? Well, a covalent bond is basically a shared pair of electrons. And a covalent bond is very hard to break. But in these compounds, you do not have to break the covalent bonds, because if you broke the covalent bonds, then you just have carbon and oxygen floating around, or hydrogen and oxygen floating around. All you're breaking is the forces between two of these molecules or more. And the melting point then really depends on the strength of those intermolecular forces. So water has hydrogen bonding, which is quite strong, and carbon dioxide only has van der Waals forces, which is very weak. Um, 
But in terms of comparing to metallic bonding or to ionic bonding, um, all intermolecular forces are pretty weak. So we say that these, um, these compounds have low melting points. As you are only breaking the intermolecular forces between the compounds, not the covalent bonds themselves. They also do not conduct electricity. And that's because they do not have um, they do not have free electrons that can move. Um, the electrons are all um, locked up in these covalent bonds. The exception to this low melting point is diamond and graphite and, and other giant covalent structures. Um, and they have high melting points because then you are, break, you are breaking all the covalent bonds. So you've, got, you've just got to make a decision whether you're looking at a molecular compound or a giant covalent compound. And from that you can then uh, discuss the melting point based on your knowledge of those structures. Another type of covalent bonding which will be new to you this year is dative bonding. Um, and that is where you get... Um, a molecule that is donating a, sh uh, a pair of electrons to another molecule which it then shares with it. So an example of this would be for example um, if we had NH4 plus and that's where ammonia which looks like this donates this pair of electrons here into an H plus ion which is just um, which is just a bare proton, it has no electrons and that means that this H plus ion has um, space for these two electrons to go into and so what happens is is that these electrons are donated to this H plus ion like so if you wanted to show that using lines, then this would be shown like this, with an arrow pointing towards the the atom that is accepting that um, that donation of that shared of that pair of electrons. Sorry. Now, some questions in an exam paper will ask you what is happening here, or to describe what a dative bond is, and to do that, you've got to um, say where the electrons are coming from and the direction of the donation. So to get the mark here you'd say uh, that um, the lone pair on NH3 is donated to the H+. So you must say lone pair and you must say where it's coming from, the whole compound, not just the nitrogen, it's coming from the NH3 and say where it's going to, and it's going towards the H plus ion. Metallic bonding is the last type of bonding that you learn about in this topic, and um, an example of something with metallic bonds would be magnesium. So metallic bonding is where you have a lattice of positively charged metal ions, that are surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. Basically delocalized means that the electrons are free to move wherever they like in the structure. To draw this uh, you must draw a regular arrangement of ions, at least eight of them, and make sure they are on top of each other like so. So, um, not like a haphazard way, you need to make sure it's a regular structure. Make sure they all have a positive charge. And then you draw some electrons between them. And the properties of metallic bonding, again, is based on this structure. Uh, so they have a high melting point because you have to break 
um, lots of strong metallic bonds, and it can conduct electricity or heat, and that's because it has um, free electrons that can move. Now, if any of this video did not make sense to you, then please come and find me when I'm running revision sessions or any time that I'm free.